This mini lecture on budgeting for health and safety is one of a group of lectures provided for the London South Bank University's Occupational Health Nursing degree programme. Hello, I'm Jo Kitney and a visiting teaching fellow at the London South Bank University. Health and safety legislation is very clear in its requirement for employers and persons running businesses to manage hazards and risks and meet obligations. So aside from the need to meet legal obligations, managing health and safety at work is an important part of good business management and the right investments for health and safety can be beneficial and also make a difference between the success and failure of an organisation. Now, although some health and safety initiatives require little or no expenditure, the effective management of health and safety at work does require some money to be spent. In this mini lecture and information sheet, budgeting for health and safety is considered. We'll look at what budgeting is and why it's important. We'll look at the types of budgets and how they're set. And we'll also consider some de decision making around budgets and how an organisation or business can gain from investing in health and safety. So what is budgeting? Well, in its simplest form, budgeting means allocating resource, usually money, for a specific activity, project or service. The size and the amount of the budget will depend on a number of factors, such as the outcome that's needed, what resources are available and what costs are likely to be incurred. Health and safety budgets are used to list down the costs associated with running health and safety services, such as providing training, buying and servicing equipment, pretty much anything that's required to make sure health and safety will be met. The costs soon add up, so it's important to understand in advance what these costs are and to track spending to make sure the money is being managed and well spent. Budget may be allocated for fixed items with a known cost, such as salary or purchasing equipment, and it may be more open-ended and really depend on the range of work activities and the numbers of staff, such as health surveillance, vaccinations, personal protective equipment and training. Now, budgeting is important because it encourages forward thinking and decision making. It also quantifies costs and encourages resource allocation. Budgeting really encourages an organisational work area to check on their spending, to make sure it's being spent when and where it should be, and to identify areas of overspend or underspend. Now, the process of setting a budget involves thinking about the goals and plans and what needs to be managed to make these happen. Budgeting encourages a business to plan and to make decisions about what it can resource and what it can't. So this is really important because a lack of resources and the right type of resources is a common reason why health and safety obligations are often not met. Now budgeting is also important because it focuses attention on what will be done and where money is being spent. Anyone working in health and safety will know that a budget allocation is often the difference between an activity or a project happening and not. Now whilst taking action for health and safety is essential to meet legal obligations and business needs, it's also naive to think that employers or those who run businesses are going to spend money on anything that's not justified. It's reasonable for a business owner or manager to question how money will be spent and the gain the organisation will get from this. These gains may be compliance with legal obligations, preventing injury or ill health, improving knowledge, culture and safe behaviours, and more commonly these days, securing a healthy and fit workforce through health and wellbeing programmes. Now there are a number of different types of budgets and each type serves a different purpose. You can see some of the different types of budgets listed on the slide here. From an occupational health and safety perspective, the main budgets used are a capital budget, an operating budget or a project budget. Now capital budget is used to forecast costs of major capital purchases such as computers and health surveillance or noise monitoring equipment whilst an operating budget is used to forecast the cost of products and services that a business may use in a budgeted period. From a health and safety perspective, these may include external audits, vaccinations, hearing tests, personal protective equipment. A project budget may be set for a defined piece of work or project to list down and track costs. 
Many organisations will use an operating budget for health and safety to make sure the day-to-day -day costs are accounted for, with capital expenditure used where a large item of equipment or software is needed, such as for a new computer or audiometry machine. When we look at operating budgets, they're most commonly used in health and safety. And an operating budget has two, two main parts, the expenses budget and the revenue budget. The expense budget indicates all the expected expenses for that coming year or period, whilst the review, revenue or income budget shows all projected revenues for the coming year. For many organisations, a health and safety budget will mainly feature expenses rather than revenue, which is one of the reasons why health and safety is seen as a cost, as it doesn't, on the budget spreadsheet, generate income. So one of the most important roles of anybody working in health and safety is to make sure that budgets are well set and give the right return on investment. Now this might be reducing accidents, injuries or sickness absence rates, compliance with obligations, or raising the health and wellness to help create a productive workforce. So whilst health and safety is a cost, it should still give a return to that organisation so that it benefits from the investments it's being made. Other budgets to be, aware, to be aware of, but may not be used for health and safety, are a cash budget that projects cash, cash flow for the coming year, sales budgets which indicate the sales, and an income the business expects to make in the following year. When it comes to setting budgets, the management style of an organisation and the type of budget being used will determine how the budget is set. Many traditional companies use a top-down budgeting, which is where top management, outline figures and available budget for middle and lower level managers to plan their work and costs around. Some organisations use bottom-up budgeting, which is where lower and middle level managers anticipate their department's resource needs and put these into a budget, which is then passed up the organisation to top management. You can see this outlined on the slide here. What works well in most organisations is a combination of both top-down and bottom-up budgeting, as it draws top management knowledge of company goals and available resource, and on lower and ma middle management knowledge of day-to-day -day operations. As you can see on the following slide, a budget is usually set out in a table and will have a number of entries in it, for example, the item required or being budgeted for, the cost per item and the numbers required, or an overall cost. Costs may be final if figures are known, or they may be forecast and projected to help calculate a budget before the actual costs have been provided for a company. Budgets are generally set towards the end of one financial year for the coming year ahead, or at the start of a project if it's a one-off item of work. Now, whilst it's important to have structure around budget setting, it's also important to have some flexibility as things may change through the period that the budget is being set for. The decision on whether budget will be provided for health and safety may not always be clear cut, with decisions made by management both objective and values based. Both of these matter in finding, health and safe, in finding money and budgeting for health and safety. So whilst the need to comply with health and safety legislation is known, businesses will often manage and budget for health and safety differently. Some put health and safety high on the agenda, some integrate health into quality, environment and wider business management, some go well beyond compliance and promote health and wellness, whilst some just want to be compliant, and there are others who do very little and then react when accidents happen. There's a catch to budgeting for health and safety, with those who spend money upfront more likely to have a good safety record with minimal injury and ill health. Those who don't budget and invest in health and safety generally incur costs after an accident, such as sick leave, investigations, prosecutions and claims. Questions that can help to determine a budget for health and safety are what do we need to do? What are the must-haves? what do we want to achieve, and what will the business benefit from? Health and safety isn't a trivial cost 
to organising a budget and so planning is really important. Now it's not unusual to have some debate around where money will be spent on health and safety, which can at times get heated. But agreeing on the goals, which needs to be done, the must-haves, all help get consensus on a budget plan. Where disagreements happen, the underpinning causes are often a lack of agreement on these goals, on the standards that will be achieved and available resource. Now where money is spent on health and safety, whether this is meeting legal obligations or going beyond compliance, this must be managed and seen as an investment and, like any other investment, it needs to be well spent and deliver a return. The budget holder is entrusted to manage the budget and to spend according to what's been agreed. The return on investment is the fulfilment of the goals and aims that were set down during the budget planning. So along with any wider benefits that may be realised, such as good morale, a productive workforce, a positive safety culture, along with trust and respect between the organisation and its workers. There's no doubt that well-set goals, a clear understanding of what will be achieved, and the budget to achieve this, pays real benefit to any company or organisation. So this draws us to the end of this mini-lecture, in which we've looked at budgeting for health and safety. We looked at what budgeting is and why it's so important, the types of budgets and how budgets are set. We also looked briefly at decision making around budgets and the importance of the organisation or the business gaining from the investments that they make in health and safety. Thank you for taking the time to listen and once again the information sheet that goes with this mini lecture can be downloaded from www kitney.com